An important concept when you talk about phase diagrams is Gibbs phase rule, which works at equilibrium. The equation for it is as follows. P plus F equals C plus N. So what is P, F, C, and N? P is the number of phases that are present. F we'll talk about in a second. C is the number of components in your system. If we're talking about water, where we said that this was a single component system, the only thing in there is water. It's not water mixed with salt or water mixed with sugar. It's just water. Um, C in this case is just going to be one. It's one component. And then N is your number of non-compositional variables. So things that you can change that aren't composition. So for example, in here you've got pressure and temperature. We would have two two non-compositional variables. So what is F? F is the number of external variables which are your degrees of freedom that you need to define in order to completely define the state of your system. Let's do an example. At point A, how many degrees of freedom are possible is a type of question you could ask, right? At point A, we could apply this. So let's do Gibbs phase rule at point A. At point A, how many phases are present? Well, we said it's a triple point your solid, liquid, and gas, since they're all touching that point, they're all in equilibrium with one another. So it's going to be 3 plus F equals C plus N. We said that it's a single component system, so just 1 plus the number of non-compositional variables. That's pressure and temperature, so 2. So just glancing at this equation, it's clear that the only value for F that solves this equation is F equals 0 meaning there are the degrees of freedom is zero. What that's telling us is that there is nothing you can do. There's nothing you can change in this diagram where you can maintain three different phases in equilibrium with each other. And that's obvious because in this diagram, there's only this one point in the center there at point A where you can have all three phases in equilibrium. Okay, let's do another one. What about points B and C? Well, points B and C, that's right here along the melting boiling point, uh, melting point and the boiling point. So in each of those scenarios, there are two phases in equilibrium, plus F. It's going to be equal to 1 plus 2. So this time, F can be equal to 1. So what this means is there's one degree of freedom. So let's look at the example for uh, B. If I choose to change something in B, right? let's say that I choose to go up in pressure. If I go up in pressure... If I want to maintain those same two phases in equilibrium with one another, the system itself decides then that we have to go down in terms of temperature to that point, right? I can choose one, but I can't choose both, right? If I go down in temperature or up in pressure, uh, then the other one gets selected for me. I only have one degree of freedom if I still want to maintain that same equilibrium, okay? And then let's do another one for point D. At point D, we've got one phase of matter plus F equals one plus two. So that means that we have two degrees of freedom. Or in other words, if you want to have just gas present, we don't have to, we can choose two different things. We can go down in terms of pressure, down in terms of temperature, and we still have just gas, right? We have two degrees of freedom. So that's how you use Gibbs phase rule in a unary phase diagram. We'll do some more complicated examples when we get to more complicated diagrams in a minute.